you for joining us for our best practices video. Today's focus is third grade equivalent fractions. My name is Stephanie Bowen. Let's get started. What do you notice? What do you wonder? Showing students a picture like this, or better yet, the actual candy bars, will start a great conversation. Then you can tell the students you want to make sure that you're being fair. So you're going to cut each candy bar in half. Students will be quick to let you know that these halves are not equal. And that is a great conversation to start out equivalent fractions. Students need to understand that before we can compare fractions, we have to make sure that we have the same size whole. Let's look at some of the learning goals for this unit on equivalent fractions. Students are identifying equivalent fractions, including halves, thirds, fourths, fifths, sixths, eighths, tenths, and twelfths. We want to focus on explaining why fractions are equivalent, and students can explain using manipulatives, drawings, number lines, and matching areas from different fractions. Students also need to understand that in order to compare two fractions, the fractions considered must refer to the same size whole, as we were talking about with the candy bars, or the same point on a number line. What's a student learning look like in the classroom? We want to see students using manipulatives to build fractions. Students can use these manipulatives to create equal fractions by finding the same amount of the whole. Students will be exposed to real world problems and be able to generate fractions to match the situations using number lines to see if the fractions are equivalent or not. In this scenario, students are making the fraction 4 eighths to match the real world problem. They can find 4 eighths on a number line and then look at other number lines to find equivalent fractions. Once students find their equivalent fractions, they can write a comparison statement deciding if the fractions are equal or not equal. Students will also want to engage in opportunities where they're looking at the size of the whole. Here we have chocolate mousse and an apple caramel cake. We can see that the fraction parts are not equal because the holes are different sizes. Students can write about their learning. What does student learning sound like in the classroom? We want to ask questions that encourage students to explain their understanding of equivalence. Can two fractions with different digits be equal? This allows students to show you with models or number lines how that can be. We might ask a student to generate a fraction that is equivalent to 4 eighths using their models, number lines, or drawings. We want to make sure that students are finding patterns. We might ask them what patterns they notice about fractions that are equal to one half and how that might help them come up with other fractions equal to one half. We want to make sure that we're asking questions about fractions that are equal to one whole and also using number lines to find equivalent fractions. Students need to be able to explain that they know fractions are equivalent on the number line if the fractions are the same distance from zero or at the same point on the number line. These types of questions will engage students in MTR 4 and 5. Here we have a list of important vocabulary for the equivalent fractions unit. We want to hear students explaining and using the vocabulary as well as the teacher especially practicing using the words numerator and denominator and understanding what they mean. How will students demonstrate their knowledge of equivalent fractions? Here's an example of an explore activity from STEM scopes where students are looking at a recipe and the ingredients in the recipe, in this case apple slices, they're modeling that with fraction tiles and then sketching their model in their journal to find equivalent fractions. Students might demonstrate their knowledge by using number lines and finding fractions that are at the same point on each number line to show that they are equivalent. 
students might be creating models of cakes or pies in this case. This is an explore activity where students see that the chocolate mousse cake is larger than the caramel apple cake, so the one eighth of each slice would not be equal. We might see students engage in an equivalent fraction match game or activity. The examples that we see here would engage students in MTR2 and MTR5. As you're visiting classrooms, let's consider some questions we could ask to gauge understanding. Explain how you know the fractions 3 fourths and 6 eighths are equivalent using a visual fraction model. We want students to be creating the fractions using tools that they have in their classroom and then being able to explain that they are equivalent because they take up the same amount of space. You could ask the same question, but encourage them to use a number line to decide if the fractions are equivalent. On the number line, students can then explain that they know 6 eighths and 3 fourths are equivalent because they're the same distance from zero or they're at the same location on the number line. Let's look at an engaging activity that students can do at home. This comes from the parent letter. It's called Fraction Hunt. Send your child on a hunt around the house looking for examples of fractions and tell him or her to write them down. As students find real world examples of fractions, they're going to write them down and draw a model. Once they have at least five fractions, parents can then help them st their student draw an equivalent fraction by drawing another model. This applies to MTR7, Seeing Mathematics in the Real World. Thank you for joining us as we explored equivalent fractions. We hope to